there's an interesting theory that has been tossed out about the Pittsburgh Steelers running back situation and a belief that maybe it's time for change. The big question is, is it? What's going on, everybody? I'm Noah Strackbein. Thank you for jumping on to Steelers To Go, your daily to-go cup of Pittsburgh Steelers news and analysis. Find us on YouTube.com slash All Steelers Talk or subscribe anywhere you get your podcast today. We are talking about an idea, a belief by one of the biggest names in Pittsburgh Steelers media, Jim Wexel, good friend of mine, who is ready to talk about the Pittsburgh Steelers running back competition and a competition that he believes should be happening. He is dubbed Najee Harris 1.1. I was there when it happened. It has partial to do with his jersey number being 22 and the other half to do with the fact that in training camp, Najee Harris has probably averaged about 1.1 yards per carry against the first team defensive line. And there are a lot of questions that come with this. It got brought to Wexel's attention when Najee failed to do what Najee Harris should do best. He's not a burst out runner. You shouldn't expect 60 yard runs from this guy. He doesn't have the speed. He doesn't have the elusiveness. He's not quick enough. He's a ground and pound type of guy. He is a Pittsburgh Steelers running back to and through. He's a guy that 3.3 yards per carry isn't great but you can't expect five. And when he lined up against the first team defensive line in seven shots in a day that was very, very run heavy, he was stuffed at the line twice, once tackled in the backfield by Quan Alexander. And you started to think, is it going to become a trend? Is Najee Harris as good as he was a season ago? Did he get better? Did he get worse? Did he get too comfortable? Meanwhile, you look at Jalen Warren, who has only gotten bigger, has only gotten stronger, has been noticeably the best running back for the Pittsburgh Steelers this offseason. If you discount Anthony McFarlane, but he's working with the second team most of the time when these exciting runs happen. And with the first team, most of the time he's just catching passes, but still looks great. But Jalen Warren is a guy that he looks like the best running back for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And Mike Tomlin addressed yesterday's practice, which stood out to me and I think everybody else. He said, I just wanted to focus on physicality in the line of scrimmage and the run game. Well, that physicality was there, but the defense won it. And Najee Harris is supposed to be a guy that always wins those battles, that can always get you in the end zone. A guy that you have to be able to rely on Because all offseason long, all we've talked about and all the Steelers have talked about and all Matt Canada has talked about and all anybody wants to say when it comes to the Pittsburgh Steelers offense is simple. They're going to win on the ground. It's going to be a Najee Harris led team. And it is that important for the Pittsburgh Steelers, because if Najee Harris doesn't have a great year, if Jalen Warren can't back him up in a productive fashion, This offense doesn't go anywhere. It's not a Kenny Pickett-led offense. It's a Najee Harris-generated offense with a dash of some really impressive wide receivers and a young second-year quarterback with plenty of upside, a better offensive line, and a really, really, really strong defense. But it all starts with the run game, and it all starts right now with Najee Harris. But from what you've seen in training camp, and I can't deny this because I think Wexel is spot on, Najee Harris has been the least impressive running back of any running back for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And you could argue, well, last year he went too hard and he got hurt, and there's concerns that he's going to do that again so he doesn't want to go too hard. They're limiting his reps. This makes sense. Najee has been a guy that... Seemingly, he goes in for one run, comes out for the rest of the first team activities. If they're doing team drills, unless it's seven shots, he maybe gets two runs, maybe three max. Three's a lot for him, though. And then it's Jalen Warren time. 
and then it's Anthony McFarland time. And then the second team comes in and it's a lot of Greg Bell and Xavier Valade and Darius Haggins. Very limited Najee Harris. And that could be Mike Tomlin and Matt Canada saying, hey, look, it, we're going to take this season with caution because last year bad things happened and we can't afford to have that happen again. Najee's a tough dude. And I agree. I, I fought for Najee all of last season with the foot injury and the second foot injury and said, hey, look, it, this guy is working with at least one Liz Frank sprain in his foot, which most guys that ends their season for him. He's a running back who relies so heavily on his feet and he's still playing. That's impressive. And I continued and continued to fight for him. And even into the off season, I fought for him and into training camp. I acknowledged, Hey, okay, look at this is a lot of Jalen Warren, a lot of Anthony McFarland because the Steelers want to see what they have in these two guys. They want to assure themselves that they have a strong core of running backs instead of just one really good running back. But we already know that. We already know what we have in Jalen Warren. And the Steelers already understand that Anthony McFarlane is a usable running back who's developed nicely and is ready to take on that RB3 role. What they don't know right now is how good Najee Harris could be and whether or not Najee Harris has taken a step forward or a step backwards. And if you shut up the Steelers practice for one day and got one day of analytics or one day of viewing time and had a takeaway from it, you'd be concerned about where Najee Harris is. And that's not just yesterday, and that's not just the day before. It's been every single day of training camp. There hasn't been a flashy day for Najee Harris. And it is concerning. It's a question that I think has presented itself, and I think it presented itself long before Wexel brought it to anyone's attention because it's been the talk of the town amongst some who watch and observe this team every day that Jalen Warren clearly looks like the better running back. And I'm not saying that it's Jalen Warren time. I'm just saying that maybe we start to actually have that conversation instead of ignoring it and making excuses that, well, Najee Harris is this and Najee Harris dealt with that. And the Steelers are doing this for Najee Harris and they're holding him back. And Najee Harris's resume is impressive. 2000 yard seasons behind absolutely atrocious offensive lines, you got to give it to him. And 3.3 yards per carry, I'm not going to knock him because, again, he was dealing with injuries and he had a bad offensive line. But this summer, there are no excuses. There are no reasons that Najee Harris shouldn't be productive. There are no reasons that Najee Harris shouldn't be a force for this offense. There are no reasons that Najee Harris should disappear into training camp. And he has. He got to touch the ball one time in the preseason game, and he had negative one yards on a reception. And I blame that on Kenny Pickett. But it was very clear that the Steelers' offense was not to give, their game plan was not to give Najee Harris the football. But in the regular season, their game plan is to give Najee Harris the football? That's my question. It's all we've talked about, all we have heard all offseason long is how Najee Harris will be the force behind the Steelers' offense, but they have held him back every step of the way, maybe in precautionary action, but at what point does that become a risk itself to say, we're not going to give you any time to develop, we're not going to let you shake off any rust, we're just going to toss you into the fire week one and hope that Everything that we have been preparing for without actually preparing it works. That doesn't seem like it's going to. It seems as if Kenny Pickett and Deontay Johnson and George Pickens are developing and building a chemistry. It seems as if Darnell Washington is evolving into a pass catcher and Pat Fryermuth is taking reps and Connor Hayward is growing rapidly. It seems as if Jalen Warren is developing momentum with this offensive line and Anthony McFarlane is doing the same, but you want to know who is not? Najee Harris. You can't just walk into a season and say, okay, I'm ready to dominate now. This is the NFL. There are a reason that they go through training camp and everyone participates in training camp. TJ Watt is 10 times the player that Najee Harris is. Minka Fitzpatrick is 10 times the player that Najee Harris is. So is Cam Hayward. All of these guys take vet days once a week. Besides that, they are on the practice field working with the first team, 
consistently. They're always on the field when they need to be. It is not one rep come off. TJ Watt will be out there for a whole series, two series. Cam Hayward, the same thing. Cam Hayward's having sacks. Alex Highsmith's coming up with plays. Minka Fitzpatrick is tackling guys at the line of scrimmage. Sometimes that's Najee Harris. Najee is not doing any of this, and I don't know why. I don't know what the concern is. I don't know how or whether or not the Steelers are thinking as if we are speculating and saying it is a precautionary action, or if they see what we see and it's maybe Jalen Warren should touch the football a little bit more. I'm not positive. I don't know what's going on. What I do know is that right now, it's a concern, and Wex is right. Jalen Warren clearly looks like the Steelers' best running back, and it doesn't even make any sense why they are allowing that to happen if they're just simply doing it on purpose.